Now that we've covered some important introductory information, let's talk a bit more about the course. As I mentioned earlier in the module, I find it helpful to develop ENC 1102 around a theme. I try to pick one that's broad enough to incorporate different disciplines and interests while still giving us some common ground as a class on which to build our knowledge together and discuss our thoughts. In this video, I'll discuss some of the expectations of the course and also some of the things you'll read and write about this semester. First off, writing is about joining a conversation. You study the voices that have come before you on any topic and you find a place where you have something to add to that conversation. My goal with this course is to guide you through relatable, hopefully sometimes interesting readings that I think welcome intellectual conversation and to encourage you to process, reflect upon, and even challenge what you read in your own writing and in discussions with your classmates. Along the way, I'll teach you strategies for making sense of complex readings, conducting useful and credible research, evaluating and combining information from a variety of sources, and developing your own persuasive arguments that are built upon a strong thesis and effectively supported by expert academic sources. I've taught courses themed around different kinds of technology uses and issues over the years, and I think it's perhaps more important now than ever to consider what role digital technologies play in our lives as dependent upon them as we are right now. Consider our current moment. You're taking online courses that you might not have intended to take online before 2020 hit us with unexpected changes to how we do just about everything. And that's still a part of our lives so far in 2021 we're all relying increasingly upon social media and video platforms to socialize and we may not be able to hang out with people in person safely in all the ways that we're used to. We have countless digital platforms and websites from which we receive our news. People may not always know how to judge the accuracy or credibility of different sources of vitally important information from public health to politics. Our access to the world right now is, for many, dependent upon their access to technology, and such access is not always equitable. Not everyone has reliable internet access. Perhaps your internet, like mine, lags during Zoom calls, and not everyone even has a computer to conduct the work that they need to, whether it's for their jobs, their schoolwork, what have you. These are challenges people are facing right now. In some ways, digital technology can make us more equal by allowing us seemingly infinite access to information and possibilities, but in other ways it can reveal our inequities too. Now, you may be finding comfort and companionship in playing video games, for example. In the summer, it was all about Animal Crossing and the Nintendo Switch, right when we really first started feeling the pandemic and being stuck indoors a bit more. Now, you might, like me, be one of those people desperately searching for a PS5 or a new Xbox to no avail. We've also got viral videos as a part of our lives, for better or for worse. They spread hope, fear, anger, entertainment, laughter, information, or sometimes misinformation. We've got ways that people are finding new jobs or new ways to do their jobs online. There's potential there, but we've also seen loss of jobs when some things just cannot translate in to the digital world. We see traditionally brick and mortar services finding innovative ways to function online, but not all of them can. And then, of course, there's the memes. So many new memes. Memes are worth studying. Academic papers have been written about memes. You could write one, potentially, for this course, because the things we find funny or comforting and choose to share with one another, the ones that stay popular and the ones that fade away, those can sometimes reveal a lot about our society and our social groups. Anyway, that's just a small sampling of all of the different ways that digital technology is a part of our lives right now. 
And don't worry, this course is not about technology during the pandemic, so we will talk a little bit about that. And you may choose to research and write about it further as the course progresses, and you develop your own research and writing interests. But there are so many interesting and evolving roles that technology plays in our lives, and there are just as many ways to approach research and analysis. And so I do think this theme, as broad as it is, can be something useful to help organize our course, give us things to explore, research, talk about, and ultimately write about. I love this quote from Isaac Asimov, a science fiction writer. Writing to me is simply thinking through my fingers. When we write, we think in different ways. We formulate our thoughts, our ideas, our goals, our interpretations of the world around us. When we write, we think, and we challenge the way we think. But before we write in this course, we will often be doing something else. We will also be researching. Research writing comes ultimately from a place of curiosity. We'll be reading different types of articles that offer a variety of ways to think about our engagement with technological tools, and you'll have the chance in online discussion and in your own writing and research to explore different perspectives and offer up your own opinions for consideration. In a digital age and in an online writing course, no less, it's important to think critically about the tools that we use to work, learn, play, and communicate. In an online course, you'll have the opportunity to hone your skills in conducting credible online research, practice your persuasive argumentative techniques on your classmates, and grow in your writing abilities and confidence as a part of a writing community. I've chosen this theme of technology, digital technology, not to limit us, but to give us a common ground on which to start. And you'll have all the freedom to make your own path from there when it comes to your major assignments. Having a common theme also allows us to specialize our research and together learn how to find reputable sources of information to produce academic arguments. Technology is widely discussed from so many different perspectives about so many different things. How do we both benefit as a class from the rich possibilities of research that's out there and also narrow our focus on what's useful for the kind of writing we're doing to you know, sort through the trash and get to the good stuff when it comes to what we read, what we use as a part of our research and our writing process. That's an important part of this course too smart research that will help inform your writing. Now, there are a wide diversity of questions and debates that you can explore and argue your perspective on when it comes to different kinds of technology. Research really is the curious pursuit of questions. And as you discover different sources that provide a variety of answers to your questions, you can begin to develop your own informed opinion and then make your own academic argument. Throughout the course, different readings that we explore and discussions that you'll have will lead to questions that you ask yourself that will jumpstart your research and take you in directions you might not expect and help you to write papers that will hopefully be of interest to you. These are just a few sample questions. We could go in so many different directions, but we might ask ourselves a question like, how does Instagram affect self-esteem? Does it create positive social connections between people, help them to share their lives in positive ways, or does it sometimes make people feel like they're missing out on something when they see a depiction of someone's life that looks you know, more exciting than theirs or something like that? This is something that psychologists and educators have studied and you would actually find quite a bit of research on. We might also ask ourselves when it comes to thinking about big internet websites, social media, um, what responsibilities, if any, do companies like Google, Twitter, and Facebook have in regulating possible misinformation? This is a question that we've been asking ourselves, well, basically since any of these websites became popular. And I think it's probably been especially relevant in 2020, as we've had a lot of political division, a lot of just news stories one after the other that can be reported in different ways by different people, and a lot of public health information. So 
do these companies, because they're popular, because they have a lot of power and a lot of reach, have responsibility for the information that users put out? For some, this comes down to a question of censorship. For others, it's about public safety and the health of democracy. Uh, There's so many different ways that a lot of these questions could go depending upon your research path. And part of what you'll learn in this course is how to conduct good, reliable research, how to make sense of the many different kinds of sources you will likely find, and to draw connections between them to produce an understanding for yourself that is going to be more informed, uh, more diverse, and help you to make an argument of your own uh, that is going to be founded in you know, good research, uh, academic expertise, but still give you the opportunity to express your opinion and your ideas in a way that is going to be more professional, uh, more academic. We could take any one of these questions and depending upon who was researching, who was trying to find answers and develop knowledge and opinions and make an argument, it could go in a lot of different directions. A question like, what can we learn about societies from the online content they consume and share? Well, that could definitely change from region to region, state to state, country to country. And you could focus on something like how social justice is enacted online and the sharing of videos for protests and police cam footage. Or you could talk about something like what people choose to talk about on Reddit, and that's quite diverse too, Uh, from very serious to very frivolous to very strange. And so these, these kinds of questions, these kinds of topics could lead in as many directions as there are students. And so I hope that somewhere within the umbrella of technology or digital technology that you will find something this semester that interests you and that you'll be able to really dig into Uh, to research thoroughly, to think about deeply, and to produce writing that, you know, we will all be excited to hear about um, and talk about. Because something you will do is discuss uh, questions, research questions, and problems on our discussion boards. That'll be a part of this class uh, because I want you to feel like you're a part of a writing community and that you're not just on your own. Even though we're not in the classroom together, Uh, You know, I do want this course to still feel like you're connected to other people, that you can get help and ideas and, you know, learn from each other as well as hopefully learn from videos like this one too. As each week unfolds, we'll explore new readings and questions. I'll post more lecture videos to instruct you in how to critique and analyze sources, conduct your own research, and produce sophisticated academic arguments. I'm really looking forward to working with all of you this semester. I think this is going to be a great course, and I really value the opportunity to help you grow as writers, as researchers, as thinkers, and communicators. Not only should this class help you in writing papers for your other courses, but you'll develop critical thinking and information literacy that will help you in life and written communication research skills, being able to make sense of information and communicate it in your own words. Those are assets to any job description. So I really hope that you'll find this course useful and interesting and something that is open to customization based on your own interests. Uh, Because while we'll start with a few assignments that are kind of shared and the same for everybody, As we progress throughout the course, you'll have more independence and you'll be able to pursue topics and research and ideas that are of most interest to you. And that's ultimately one of my favorite parts of ENC 1102. As Susan Sontag says, a writer, I think, is someone who pays attention to the world. But what we see when we pay attention to the world, well, that's going to differ from person to person because we bring different perspectives, different experiences, different worldviews, and that's something I always look forward to seeing represented in my students' writing. And it's my job to help give you the tools and teach you how to use them when it comes to developing research questions. Uh, conduct strategic searches to find authoritative sources of information, 
to evaluate those sources according to academic criteria that will allow you to understand current discussions and debates on issues uh, that hopefully you can choose some that are of interest to you. And then you'll analyze and draw upon those sources to craft a thesis that represents your own insights and ideas and to make a persuasive academic argument that best represents your unique contribution to the kind of conversations we have about the issues we face in the world. That is ultimately the job of a writer, to communicate what they think clearly and effectively. And an academic writer incorporates research but still maintains their own voice. And I'm really looking forward to getting to know yours.